Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm going to start the show off by quoting Ernest Hemingway. Now, he once said that the world breaks everyone, but afterwards, some are strong at the broken places. Now, that quote applies directly to my first guest this morning, Diana Dotson. Now, her life was totally turned upside down when she received a letter in 1991. This letter stated that she had received blood or a blood product from someone who later developed AIDS. She had to get tested. Diana got tested and found out she was HIV positive. Diana is going to share her story with us this morning and also talk about removing the stigma that unfortunately is still around. Diana, it is such a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Jenna, for having me and thank you for being interested in this subject. Well, you are so interesting, Diana. I mean, your whole life. Oh my goodness, it's, I don't know how you've been able to go through all the experiences you've gone through in just one life. Diana, before we get into the letter that totally turned everything upside down, I want to talk about when you first came to Key West. Now, you were only 11 years old, and you were a runaway. It was the 60s and mm -hmm. the hippie times, and I had run away to go to uh, Woodstock. And we got to Miami, and got things got kind of turned around, and we ended up meeting some hippies that brought us to Key West, my friend and I who had run away together. And uh, everyone had, I ended up on my own in Key West and was sleeping down by Singleton Docks one night on a piece of cardboard with this little dog that had followed me. And about five o'clock in the morning, Captain Tony was on his way to the Greyhound at his boat. He saw me, this young child, <coughs> and took an interest in, took me to breakfast and, and listened to my whole story and became a very important part of my life. He then took me to the Fogarty House, which was a hippie commune. He paid for me to stay there, uh, room and board, and it was an, it was an amazing year and a half of uh, an amazing time in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Buffett was coming through the Fogarty House at that time. I used to ask him to play for me so I could sing. Uh, I, I used to like to sing House of the Rising Sun and mm -hmm. Eve of Destruction. And he always had his originals and, and didn't really want to play for me too much. <laughs> and when Captain Tony would come, he'd say, let the girls sing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a memory you'll never yeah. forget. Now, Diana, what were you running away from to be 11 years old and, and to do um, this? Well, let's just say evil stepfather and let it go at that. Okay. Yeah. So you wanted to get away from, from what was happening in your life with your mm -hmm. family, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. You come here, but you didn't stay too long in Key West. About two years. Mm -hmm. a little, I, I ended up being 13, then I had fibbed about my age. Everyone thought I was like 16 or 18 or something like that. But it was an amazing time. It was a commune and everyone took care of one another. It was just, the, the 60s was uh, an era that we'll never repeat again. Mm -hmm. So after you left Key West, Diana, where did you go? I went back to California, which I'm originally from. I ended up marrying very young and having two children and traveling for many years. And uh, I divorced when I was 25 and moved to San Francisco with my family. And I became an executive for the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. And during that time, my assistant uh, became very ill and passed away. And that was 1993. And they called it GRID, Gay-Related uh, Immune Disorder. Uh, I felt very sad that uh, the fear was, it was like ground zero and people were dying. It was like a holocaust. And everyone turned their back on my friend, Peter, and I uh, was very heartbroken about it. And I became a, a volunteer for a group called the Shanti Project. And I became a counselor and uh, I worked with people that had AIDS and I worked with people who were grieving and uh, did facilitation for a group uh, meetings and things. Mm -hmm. And um, I... What an experience you yeah, had. I, now, now, Diana, at this time, had you received the letter yet that you had no, received the blood transfusion? No. During the time that I was a counselor is when I received the received the blood product. I had a, a procedure in a doctor's office and I have a, 
uh, a blood clotting disorder where I don't clot easily. So they gave me this blood clotting product, which was clear. I didn't know it was blood at the time. I uh, had no idea that that would be possible because I was very careful during those years because of the involvement in uh, the, the issue that I was very, very careful in mm -hmm. my life. And so that I, I had, and I had no knowledge of that, um, that that product was, and that was in 1985, and they didn't contact me until 1991. To let you know that mm -hmm. you had received this blood product from right. someone who later developed AIDS. Diana, that was a life-changing moment for you. What oh, did yes. you do when you received that letter? Well, I, I went and got tested, and then I wasn't able to even tell my friends what happened. I just left town. I, had, I was the executive director for the Cultural Preservation Society, and we had gotten the lease for the, for the uh, Mallory Dock for the artists and secured that, and I worked quite hard doing that. I also worked with Captain Tony on his successful run for mm -hmm. the uh, mayor of Key West. And uh, I was, I sing, so I was kind of out there and people knew who I was and I was devastated by this news and I left Key West. I went to Puerto Rico and I uh, went to Ann Wigmore's uh, Hippocrates Institute and, and started living on raw foods and wheatgrass juice. and. Mm -hmm. knew that I had to do extraordinary things to keep my health and that's the way I'm still living foods and um, all of that. Well great. Well Diana we're going to take a quick break right now but we're going to continue to talk more about your story and also talk about the stigma that unfortunately is still around with people who have HIV or AIDS and I know that you really want to be able to help get this stigma removed. Where it's it's not a gay disease, it's not a it's not something that someone should be uh, judged for. We can't you cannot get HIV from any other way except for direct blood to blood. Mm -hmm. You can't get it from sharing a, a soda or giving someone a hug and people still don't know that and mm -hmm. It happens quite frequently where I get comments from people because I'm very open about it. Mm -hmm. I've even had people tell me, why do you tell people that? Why don't you just keep it a secret? Well, it's my life and it's what I deal with and, and um, that's why I don't keep it a secret. I think that, that uh, people need to be more understanding about the different paths that people have to follow in their life. Absolutely. People need education. We will be right back after these messages. Stay with us. There's much more to come this morning.